It's Wednesday, December 19. Good afternoon. I'm Herman Green with the Midday News. A special welcome to those of you watching online at onespotmedia.com. Opposition spokesman on tourism, Dr. Wickham McNeil, is again raising issue with the government's proposed spend on the Welcome to Montego Bay sign. The sign was budgeted to cost $17 million, but following an assessment by quantity surveying firm Davidson and Hannah, Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett announced that that amount is insufficient. Dr. McNeil contends that the, peer, the report did not serve its purpose as it only outlined the cost associated with the project. He believes Jamaicans wanted to know how they can get a cheaper sign. What I've seen is that they're still trying to justify the $17 million estimate expenditure on the sign in Montego Bay. I think they're completely missing the, the, the real crooks of the matter. They're spending $17 million on a sign. We, we want a good sign, but $17 million is a lot of money. You can spend any amount of money, but where you're having situations with, with problems in the education system, national security, just the problems we have in Jamaica, the message you send is important. In explaining the $17 million spend, the tourism minister reasoned that the sign will market Jamaica through tourists taking pictures at the location. However, Dr. McNeil says this may do more bad than good. If persons were to stop and come out, it would create a traffic hazard. Uh, that, that's number one. But number two, there's no way that this can generate um, revenue. What 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 you're hoping is that it adds to the aesthetics and, and, and builds up the welcome. And we can do that at a fraction of the cost. As you're pointing out, is an important point. There, there will be not just the capital cost, but the recurrent cost of this. And I think it's something that we have to look at in how we spend government funds judiciously. The prospects of Caribbean airlines are improving. That's the word from Minister with Responsibility for the Public Service, Favel Williams. Ms. Williams gave the update while speaking at a recent post-Cabinet press briefing. Caribbean Airlines was merged with Air Jamaica in 2010, an arrangement which made Jamaica part owners of the carrier. Jamaica owns 16%, while the Trinidad government owns the remaining 84%. This year, first year, in its history, Caribbean Airlines has turned a profit. Nine months of profitability total, TT $96 million, or US $15.36 million. The airline has also made great strides and is now ranked 25th of 164 global airlines as of September 2018, and the ranking is done by the official aviation guide star ranking. I just want to end by saying one has to celebrate when an airline makes money. As vending and shopping in town centers increase across the island for Christmas, there is growing concern about counterfeit goods being sold to unsuspecting buyers. The concern follows raids by the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigation Branch, CTOC, this year, where millions of dollars worth of counterfeit goods were seized. But the Jamaica Vendors, Higglers and Markets Association complains that its members' goods are being seized even though they are not counterfeit. Here's TVJ's Shane Masters with the story. In April this year, over $600 million worth of counterfeit goods were seized by the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigation Branch, CTOC. Then in May, more counterfeit seizures at the ports, some $376 million worth. But President of the Jamaica Vendors, Higglers and Markets Association, Dunson Whittenham, insists that some of what is being seized is not counterfeit. He says vendors buy their goods legitimately from China, which makes goods at five different levels and has the rights to most major brands worldwide. China okay. buy all right, all patent. All of them want to offer each shoes today is only $10. That's all. They are not the inventor. Mm -hmm. It's not their brand. Mm -hmm. They are not the manufacturers mm -hmm. of this. All what they are doing yeah, is so wholesaling, like distribution, and retailing. Why then, you understand, our people should suffer this? Mr. Whittingham explained that despite the fact that they cut out the middleman, the association's members are receiving unfair treatment by the police whenever they bring in goods from China. He noted that the goods are being detained by customs or stores raided and labeled as counterfeit. 
Mr. Whittingham said the Christmas season is where vendors make a lot of money, but this issue is affecting their livelihood. One of our um, store outlets, which a member of our organization, it was raided. Millions of dollars just of, of goods have been seized from that place. Talking about, um, you know, falsified goods. Mr. Whittingham says his association will be taking action on the matter as he believes that the government should have dialogue with the sources in China if their goods are considered counterfeit. And we are going to take it up serious with the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, mm -hmm. the Ministry of National Security, because what is happening, if a goods is not suitable and you know that this is a false Nike or a false Adidas, this is not the day where Adidas is named Adidas, Nike named Knife, Reebok named Redbok. Same name, you can, same China same logo. China bought, bought all of this. Mr. Whittingham was speaking on TVJ's Small Jamaica program on a Tuesday. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. A 19-year-old teenager was killed and two other persons hospitalized following a motor vehicle crash on the Melrose Bypass in Williamsfield, Manchester last night. TVJ News understands that about 7 o'clock, Brian Knight was driving a Toyota Paso motor car towards Williamsfield. He lost control of the vehicle and slammed into a truck traveling in the opposite direction. Mr. Knight was pronounced dead at hospital, while the two passengers in his vehicle were admitted in serious condition. Mr. Knight, who is from Hanbury Road in Manchester, was employed to the Manchester Cooperative Credit Union Limited. The Credit Union Limited closed for business today to mourn his death. And the Road Safety Unit is reporting that 356 persons have died in crashes on the nation's road since the start of the year, 41 more than the corresponding period last year when 315 road traffic deaths were recorded. The unit says 15 persons have died in 19 days so far this month. Motorcyclists, pedestrians, passengers in private motor vehicles and drivers of private motor vehicles account for 80% of road users killed to date. The unit is appealing to motorists to reduce their speed on the roads, especially during this Yuletide season. And a senior lecturer in the Faculty of Education and Liberal Studies at the University of Technology, Rachel McFarlane, wants to carry out further audits on the nation's roads to focus on the problem of design deficiencies. Speaking earlier this week on TVJ's Smile Jamaica program, she noted that the yearly increase in road fatalities is partly due to poor design of road surfaces as well as inadequate signage and markings. Ms. McFarlane lamented that road safety initiatives have been too focused on monitoring road users and vehicle fitness and neglecting the critical issue of poor road design. The different authorities have initiatives, but they have only been focused on two aspects of road crash prevention. They have looked at the road user, they have looked at the vehicle fitness, but they have seemed to neglect it when we talk about the road design. So is it that we're actually creating death traps for the so, different road when users? We, and when we also pointed to issues along the newly reconstructed Barbican Road in San Andro. In Barbican, we actually have diagonal crossings when typically pedestrian crossings should be perpendicular to the road. Mm -hmm. But we now have diagonal crossings, so you have the pedestrian in what the we're road looking at here. much longer. Some of the deficiencies that we have noticed, if you think of the intersection halfway through on Oxford Road, right beside Flow, mm -hmm. if you come to that junction, what you realize there are three lanes, but there are actually four signals that's up there. So one of the lanes are actually being operated by two signals. Member of Parliament for Portland Western, Daryl Vaz, is promising improved infrastructure across several housing schemes in the parish come 2019. His commitment was made following a tour of government build housing schemes across seven of the nine municipal corporation divisions in Portland on Tuesday. He was accompanied by representatives of several state agencies, including the Housing Agency of Jamaica, the National Water Commission, and the National Works Agency. Mr. Vaz explained that it's part of the Prime Minister's mandate to the National Housing Trust to improve rundown infrastructure in housing schemes built by the government years ago. Some of them will be take a little longer because of the infrastructure that's required, upgrading of, 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 of the roads and water, especially wells, 
that have to be dug, etc. NWC has their program, NWC has their program. But what we're going to try and do is drive it and see how we can get the National Housing Trust to help us with some of the resources and some of the expertise to do it. The Andrew Holdness-led cabinet has signaled its intention to fight alcohol abuse among high school students. That position follows a report which indicated a high level of alcohol use among students, particularly boys. The report further stated that Jamaican students were the highest users of alcohol among students in the Americas. Information Minister Ruel Reed says local health authorities are making the issue a top priority and are trying to start dialogue among stakeholders on how it can be adequately addressed. The cabinet was advised of a proposal for a 15-year plan of implementation of policy measures focused on ensuring SDG 3, good health and well-being for all Jamaicans of all ages. This will be explored in the proposed green paper. Alcohol is the most abused drug in Jamaica. In the regional status report on alcohol and health in the Americas, Washington, D.C., 2015, Jamaica had the highest rate of male students in the Americas, 43.5% between the ages of 13 to 15, reporting to have been drunk at least once. The St. James Public Health Department is reporting an increase in the number of chickenpox cases being seen at various health facilities across the parish. It says there is normally an increase in viral infections during the colder months of the year. But despite the increases, Medical Health Officer for St. James, Dr. Marcia Johnson, says it is not an outbreak. On average, we would see maybe one or two cases per week. Since October, we've been seeing a little bit more than that, so sometimes five and maybe up to ten cases per week reporting to our health centers. But we do know that persons may visit um, their private practitioners or it is that they may treat themselves, and so we would not be able to say for certain the number of persons in St. James with chicken pox. In the meantime, Dr. Johnson is warning persons to exercise extreme caution as the virus can be spread even before the rashes which are associated with chicken pox appear on the body. And here's a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In the next edition of the health report, we look at the dengue virus. The fogging, as I said, is to decrease the, the mosquito decrease the number of mosquitoes because the fogging will kill the, the mosquitoes. But they have to do it on a continuous basis because the larva will now become mosquito in a, in a day or two. So it has to be done in a consistent way. As I said before, is that we tend only to, to do something, to be reactive, you know, when something happens. That's the health report this evening in Primetime News. And if you're sick with dengue, get plenty of rest and drink fluids to prevent dehydration. To help prevent others from getting sick, protect yourself from mosquito bites during the first week of illness. And rest in a screened or air-conditioned room or under a bed net while you have a fever. We go on to international news. In the United States, the House of Representatives is po poised to take up a landmark piece of legislation on criminal justice reform. U.S. President Donald Trump is expected to sign it into law by the end of the week. The details from the CNN. On this vote, the yeas are 87, the nays are 12. The Senate overwhelmingly approving a sweeping overhaul of the criminal justice system in an 87 to 12 vote on Tuesday. President Trump taking to Twitter, congratulating the Senate and vowing to sign the bill. The legislation is aimed at easing sentences for nonviolent offenders and reducing the number of repeat offenders. It gives judges more leeway in mandatory minimum sentences. It will also allow thousands of federal inmates to leave prison earlier than they otherwise would have, a fact that the 12 Republicans who voted no say could let dangerous criminals free too soon. 
Still, in a political climate that at times appears more polarized than ever, passing the bill was a rare moment of bipartisanship. The bill called the First Step Act. Receiving support from Republicans and Democrats alike. Well, it was an important leadership moment uh, for Democrats and Republicans, progressives and conservatives, the left and the right. In fact, it was a bipartisan effort from the start, with Trump urged on by his son-in-law, Jared Kushner who enlisted the help of Democratic lawmakers, Kim Kardashian West, and CNN's Van Jones, who also hailed the bill's passage Tuesday. A Christmas miracle just happened. News now in sports. The West Kingston Derby involving Arnett Gardens and Tivoli Gardens headlines four midweek games in the Red Stripe Premier League today at the Edward Siago Sports Complex. Five points separate fourth place Arnett Gardens from seventh place Tivoli Gardens on the standing. The two teams have had a slow season with Tivoli Gardens winning winless rather in their last five matches, getting only two points. Arnett, on the other hand, have only one win in their last five. The last time the two teams met, Arnett came away 1-0 winners at the Anthony Spaulding Sports Complex thanks to Marvin Morgan's 49th minute strike. Elsewhere, UWI FC will search for their third straight win when they travel to the Frome Complex to face FC Reno. Reno will start the contest in the relegation zone after Harborview beat Montego Bay United 3-0 on Monday night. The battle of the promoted teams takes place at the Royal Lakes Playfield as Dunby Holden, who won the first meeting, hosts Mount Pleasant Football Academy. The last of the four games will take place at Effortville, where Humble Lion welcomes the rampant Waterhouse. A win for the Jerusalem team would see them replacing Portmore United at the top of the table and all games kick off at 3 p.m. And that wraps up the Midday News. I'm Herman Green. Please join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports, and production teams, good afternoon.